Hi, and welcome to another episode of Hot Takes with me, the Silver Fox. And yet again, we're going to have a look at the existential attacks on the very being of woman. No longer do the government recognise this, but this has been said in many of my videos that they are doing a complete overhaul uh, and they're negating the existence of women or girls or female. They're removing any acknowledgement of the entire sex from, well, from just about everything, from guidelines, from laws, you name it. And there's another one today where government advice says that students in schools are no longer women or girls, they're students who menstruate or learners who menstruate. And there's no mention of being a woman or being a girl or being a female. So <clears throat> why does this madness continue? Why do the government, as well as everyone else, as you know, videos, many videos on this subject, why do the government want to completely annihilate the existence of women? What is their sinister motivation? Or is it just cowardice in the face of the trans lobby, the tiny, tiny, tiny minority of mentally ill people? Let's have a look at the article. So here's the, uh, here's the article. Um, now, government advice on free sanitary products in schools becomes gender neutral as women and girls become students who menstruate. Unbelievable, isn't it? The document on the Department for Education website describes how products should be available for all. No, no, they, they shouldn't be available for all. They should be exclusively available for women and girls, i.e. the only people who need them. Because if you're a man or a boy, you'll never need one. However, it detailed young people menstruating and learners who menstruate. And the memo only referenced girls and women once and they used the word female twice. Because they need to cancel women as a, as a, out of existence, really. Women are no longer to be a thing. Then they're going to redefine the word woman to include mentally ill men. So, government advice on free sanitary products in schools has become gender neutral after women and girls were referred to as students who menstruate. A seven-page 2020 document on the Department for Education website described how period products such as pads and tampons should be available for all who need them. The word, therefore, women and girls who need them. However, the document detailed young people menstruating. I've never menstruated. I never will. Because I am a man. However, the document detailed young people menstruating, learners who menstruate and students who menstruate at the times reported. It only referenced girls and women once in the footnotes and used the word female twice. The DFE spokesman said the wording is being amended and we are urgently reviewing all of our pages to that effect. Yeah. So why are they demanding that women be cancelled? Why are they demanding that no mention of girls or females should be allowed? when ultimately only women, girls, only females menstruate. I mean, I can't. No man can. We don't have a uterus. We don't have ovaries. We don't release eggs. I mean, don't get me wrong, we do regular releases, but not in that way. Helen Joyce of Sex Matters says, replacing these ordinary words with ludicrous expressions reduces girls to their bodily functions and increases the stigma around menstruation. Yes, and she is right. This makes it even harder for them to navigate puberty. Well, the government don't care about navigating puberty. The government don't care about girls and their mental and physical health. The government only care about kowtowing to a tiny, tiny proportion of mentally ill men and their cohort of mad supporters. It comes after, the report, uh, after it was reported that the NHS has dropped the word women from its main online health advice for those being treated for cervical womb and ovarian cancers. And I did a video of this the other day. Uh, cervical cancer is now described on the health services website as a cancer that's found anywhere in the cervix, while womb cancer affects the womb. To see the word women being used to talk about female illness, patients have to click further into the website. Yeah, so they're actually talking about people with a womb people with a uterus, people with ovaries, not women. Because there's apparently, apparently, there's people out there who are women, but they don't have a womb and a uterus and that, but they do have a prostate. And these prostated women, uh, they must be checked out for their non-existent uterine smear, cancer things. 
I don't know which way they're going to go in. I mean, you know, you can go and get your uterus checked out, love. I'm going to have to go up your cock to get to it. Madness. Uh, England's NHS website, which is often the first port of call for people checking symptoms. Uh, yeah, it's better than Dr. Google, but not much. Uh, previously used the word women to talk about female cancer, cancers. And it says, womb cancer is cancer that affects the womb. The, the womb or uterus is where a baby grows during pregnancy. Most womb cancer usually starts in the lining of the womb, the endometrium, and is also known as endometrial cancer. How serious the womb cancer is depends on how big it is and if it has spread to your general health. No mention of women. It had previously stated, cancer of the womb, uterine or endometrial cancer, is a common cancer that affects the female reproductive system. It is more common in women who have been through the menopause. So they used to talk about women and they, are, they no longer talk about women because their whole um, direction of travel, if you like, is to completely eradicate women, cancel women, negate girls, make females to be not a thing. It's almost like we're living in Saudi Arabia or, I don't know, the Vatican in the 1300s. Medieval. Um, <clears throat> the move has come under fire and, according to the Times, from researchers into birth and childcare who worry those that with poor language skills who already have worse health outcomes could find it difficult to understand the NHS website. Um, I'm going to come up at this point and discuss this. Um, it's, it is appalling, um, but I'm going to put a few views on it. So let me come up and we'll round this off. This, of course, is utter, utter madness. Now, we need to find out who signed off on this, whose idea it was, who signed off, who's responsible. Name them, shame them, and then fire them. When you reduce the clarity of anything like this, those at the lower end of the educational spectrum will get confused or will be misled or will fail to understand. And these people are the ones most directly um, affected by it. This will damage women's health. This could cause premature death. This could cause a lot of problems. And why? For the sake of inclusion of a tiny, 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 tiny proportion of mentally ill men. Meanwhile, 51% of the population are being targeted into non-existence. Enough is enough. For God's sake, enough has got to be enough. We need to stop the madness. And for a government to be doing this is shameful upon them. A government that claims, oh, equality in all things, and then disregards and cancels over 50% of the population. Find out who's, do who's doing this and fire them. And if it's a minister, fire them. And if it's a government policy, kick them out of the next election. 51% of the vote, ladies. You can kick them out. Anyway, I shall round it here because it's, it's a sort of thing that if I've thought about it too much, I could get quite angry, so I'm going to stop. If you like what you hear and see on the channel, please hit the subscribe button if you haven't already. Ring the bell for notifications of future output. Leave a like, leave a comment. And until next time, stay safe, stay well, and goodbye.